Allora Ennio, siamo qua oggi in questa torrida giornata. We have met on this hot August day in Padova to try and tell the story of the language that has accompanied your artistic career, which is not only artistic, but a language embedded in the Italian culture and society since 1957, as this catalog testifies. These have been the topics of our conversations over recent years, but not just of ours, but also those you have had in numerous meetings with protagonists of Italian cultural life. This is how I will introduce you, saying you are an artist, designer, architect, professor of the Academy of Fine Arts, founder of Italian vanguard movements, and as you may tell me later, deep down, none of all this. Riguardandomi ieri, no? un po' tutto l'attraversamento, in qualche modo, di quello che hai proposto come attraversamento. Yesterday, when I was thinking about your works in this catalog, I would have started from the point that I feel is interesting to discuss the relationship between art and science. If there is one whose terms are programmed, that's the word, stochastic, topologic, perceptology, play, ironic, but with method. I would like to ask you about the method, because questions on method are at the core of scientific production, and I feel that the question of method is always present in your artistic work. Research that has produced hundreds of works, speeches, meetings, and that have given shape to your life. Formalization becomes an object, not because the object is important, but because it is built from the thought it represents. E come poi questa indagine ha preso forma? perché è la formalizzazione che diventa oggetto, non tanto perché l'oggetto è importante, ma quanto perché è costrutto del pensiero rappresentato. Allora, tu insisti su un punto che mi pare che voglia racchiudere eh, tutti gli aspetti complessi eh, di una personalità, nel caso mio specifico, di un... You insist on a point which it seems to me, wants to enclose all the complex aspects of my personality, my journeys, the tectonic plates that have been my physical and cognitive experience. What is the element that underlines and encloses all these experiences? You hold that it is method. However, I would go beyond this concept of method because it recalls experiences of Cartesian rationalism. In view of the latest situations that are developing in the field of neurological science, I would say that the method is only one approach that investigates in depth the mechanisms that preside over cognitive actions. It is the capacity to implement operations of ledger domain, of shifting, if we want to use a psychological, psychiatric term, of Spaltung, as Bloiler used to say, constantly moving events from one land to another using all the positivity of the land. For a long period in the 19th century, but also the Middle Ages, the difference between mechanical art and free art was shown by the refusal by part of the ruling middle classes, which developed throughout the Renaissance, to learn the mechanical arts and to underline the gravity of just considering theory, which couldn't have been more mistaken 
and must be removed from our horizon. Si ritiene che l'arte e la scienza si contrappongono per la loro o serietà o non serietà. Ecco, nulla di più eh, sbagliato che va espunto da questo nostro orizzonte di tipo nuovo. Eh, Gadamer negli anni 50 disse che la scienza era soggetta a delle lunghe transitorietà di moda, ossia aveva le sue mode. In the 50s, Gadamer said that science was subject to trends, in the same way that there were trends in artistic literary fields, in figurative arts and in the theater. What does this highly reductive term mean? There are modes, peculiar interests, that take form in certain historic periods, in a sort of general paradigm where things substantiate each other. For example, the modern and contemporary age began with a process of destabilized horizons, typical of philosophical orders, like Derrida's The Structuralism, Lacan's unusual linguistic function, to name an analyst, or Deleuze's interior counter-revolutions in anti-psychiatry. How did these openings emerge? Because the historian Foucault analyzed the relationship between science and art in his investigations, in his famous words and things and reopen the discussion of all the aspects of semantics and phenomenology. Rimette in discussione tutti gli aspetti della semantica, ma anche delle fenomenologie. Allora, il problema forse fondamentale che mi interessa e la tua domanda va a, a, a chiedermi in che senso ho un metodo. The basic question I am concerned with, given your question, is in what sense do I have method? I am telling you that the openings and theoretical type movements preside over behavior, that both a mathematician and an artist constantly produce. In each event, whether it is technical scientific or technical creative, there are internal territories, processions, that can be defined as theoretic, that are able to inform thought trajectories. In simple words, scientific thought and artistic thought work in typical places, normally defined as the Spanish tavern, where you find everything is already there because you had taken it there in the past. La taverna spagnola, ci trovi quello che c'è già dentro perché ce l'hai portato, insomma c'è un meccanismo di ricerca, la scienza e anche specialmente in questo momento con le neuroscienze che sono la cosa... The most seductive and fascinating research at the moment is into the neurosciences because they can give answers to theorems about instability. What I am interested in is to adopt a program. There is nothing more gratuitous than to go off on a tangent with solipsistic and romantic operations. But science does not accept this. It has its own ethics. There is a scientific community that needs to verify. There is a literary community with art theoreticians and historians, with the increasing trend to underline histories of art, and not just history of art. As if we are talking about histories that are parallel or just slightly diverging, and we no longer talk about a history of events that gathers facts about lands and conquests of varying nature. La scoperta che mi interessa in questo ultimo periodo e con la quale poi tra l'altro ho adottato questo metodo di passare dentro le scienze che caratterizzano, da cui potevo ecco, prendere e caratterizzare molta della ricerca. Io penso In the most recent period, I have been using an across-the-board method through the sciences to distinguish my own personal research through positive and local circumstances. Because I live in a city that is affected by very strong university socio-political tensions. 
I think this is a quality. Having been a citizen of the world, having carefully studied what changes have occurred in other unspecialized fields, che non specialisti, ecco, quello che mi interessa e che mi affascina fondamentalmente in questo momento, nelle letture che sto facendo tra l'altro poi di, di personaggi molto importanti che vanno da Batson dico, a, a Damasio o da altri, o, o addirittura ecco, le ultime cose che mi avevi anche passato tu di, di Anselmeri e di Magistretti. Eh, At the moment, eh, I'm very interested eh, and fascinated eh, in rereading eh, very important eh, characters eh, from Bateson eh, to Damasio, or the last essays eh, I was told about by Anseme eh, and Magistretti. Eh, These are revisitations, eh, extensions, eh, and instabilities eh, I use to observe the adaptation phenomena of the human brain. The ability for evaluation, which can no longer be confined within the disciplines. There is also perhaps a noteworthy presence of extraneousness and worldliness. And perhaps the concept I was talking about earlier returns here. Worldliness leads these new subjects to abandon the 19th century specializations, preclusions and prefigurations. All neuroscientists now know that the brain is capable of absolutely amazing behaviors. To quote Hamlet, one could say that in our thousands of open synapses, there are many more things than there are in philosophy and art. The mental world is able to organize the complexity of the universe. And it is absolutely wonderful because there are no gratuitous structures. Gli scienziati in questo momento stanno facendo valutazioni su qual è una ragione specifica con cui la comunità delle entità biologiche che ci appartengono sono in grado. Naturally, neuroscientists are evaluating the specific reason in the communitas of biological entities which we possess, which are able to adopt a general and therefore productive behavior, a bios, a vitality, following its own interests, evaluating with amazing astuteness the methods for activating connections with the cellular parts and the totality of the mental structure. This sort of thought overcomes the old dichotomies between art and science, and is a form that casually takes over, entering the thought structures to expand them and make them undisciplined. What I am fascinated in is an aspect of my personality that is a little schizoid, if we wish. The widespread interest for many things that I share with others, who, in turn, are able to connect the parts That is what happens in what I would define as the mass of the mind, the brain, the neuroptic. How do some of our cognitions develop in the exterior world? Well, thanks to the fact that recently certain forms of analysis have been determined, the mental maps that were obtained by means of tomography or other methods which show the connections between the unconsidered parts. It is no longer the elementary geography of the map, of the empire, as Borges would say, of typical parts of a sector organization, for limited geography, for topography, such as by Camper or Gall, or the experience of the first localized organization of the sentiments. The sentiments and driving forces that 19th century researchers spoke of, which with great effort they are still trying to determine to localize these maps, and we all know that the maps of the empire are not the empire, but despite that, for a long time, science stubbornly continued to draw and represent it. And they are completely different from the maps that Damasio studied, who caused a great revolution thanks to his very acute observation on sentiment. These new neuroscientists are also philosophers. If I am undisciplined, I would say that these new people are...
Dico, se io sono un indisciplinato, direi che questi soggetti più nuovi sono, sono quasi forti, più indisciplinati. Sì, sono quasi mi rubano una, una forma di pensiero. More undisciplined. Almost more undisciplined. Yes, they almost steal the form of thought because they are as undisciplined as I am. The way in which Damasio discovered the Conatus Spinoziano He annexed it to affirm a privilege. When Cartesian's error was denounced, we moved away from that method. This new experimentation is inadequate when you are faced with the facts. I would not say that it throws the dice to show you are right, but many stochastic presences of whom initially one is unable to understand the intimate connections The weave with which they are organized are revealed to more acute observations with the instruments that we now have available, such as those of atomic physics, medical equipment, using discrete computerized imaging, able to dynamically locate the interconnections and incursions. There is a current thought known as Princeton Gnosis, which investigates the existence of a general intellect that approaches theistic positions. Could you be more specific what this atheistic concept is? Nell'evoluzionismo in questo ultimo periodo si è fatta si è fatto un ritorno, un appello An evolutionism. In recent times, a great appeal has been made to the creativity ability that Darwin had and his theories on the evolution, its power as a system and method to analyze evolution. However, recently, there have also been fundamental observations in more mystic currents of American nature, which are characterized by this type of thought. Raymond Ryer tells us that American scientists working around the University of Princeton, defined in a book that was never written but which exists, called the Princeton Gnosis, are investigating what happens a moment before a definitive move in development is made. Ecco, qual è la ragione per cui la vita si produce? Ecco, come se What is the reason why life reproduces? As if Darwin and much of the 19th century positivity had worked from a certain point onwards, on the transnational chains, the open Marcusean chains of development, while remaining agnostically distant and not being concerned about the only mystery that both artists and scientists are interested in. Che possiamo reperire come punto di nodo, di annodamento o di snodamento o come lo vogliamo chiamare. I would like to stop you here on the only mystery that both artists and scientists are interested in. It seems to me that this is one of the things we can consider as a node, a knot. Important because in my readings it is the point I have managed to trace, which was also the central node in Leonardo's thought, wasn't it? Questo è un parallelo che finora sono, sono, scusa, mi era oscuro. Sono le nuove geografie, nessun scienziato. There are new geographies. No scientist who studies political layouts now has no clear national borders. This is due to the fall of the great political counterparts between iron curtains and antagonism of this nature, or the paranoia of an opposing politician. They fell when faced with the impossibility of having a border defined, a lemon, or perhaps that we no longer recognize them. I'll go back, I'm sorry, but just very briefly. How we do not know where the mind begins that enters a body. As Damasio insists in his analyses, a body that is the only authentic informant of the entire abstract construction 
only on such a physical body, so material that a highly articulated mentalism can be constructed on, it able to disregard any rational locution and any process. Qualsiasi locuzione razionale, qualsiasi processo, perché ecco, la fluida improvviso di mondi di sentimenti che sono capaci. The unexpected flow of words into sentiment can cause shifting, pulsing, duplicated inscriptions. And I would quote Bates in here double negations that are absorbed but which are obliged and oblige us to understand communicatively how the message was intended, understand whether we work in a dual prohibition that does not agree with the facts. This makes everything extremely problematic. There is instability as if one were standing on quicksand. But it produces in people, us, in this historic moment, a vital enthusiasm in our profound bios. What does this constant inadequacy of being in a global cosmological apparatus produce in us? The questions are all valid now, even though once they were considered heretical. If, as Minsky and other cybernetics sustain, there is a series of amino acid chains that configured after the Big Bang to produce the current situation, why could the same thing not have happened in other possible worlds? This question, which used to seem a metaphysical outburst or totally irrational, now, it is the only real question you ask yourself, because without bothering any deities or religions, it completely changes your approach. This profound laity, if you wish, but also this profound theology you have, is Spinoza's God. Ecco, è il Dio di Spinoza, insomma, che non è... No, 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 fermati là. Questo vorrei capire nella profonda No, stop there. I want to understand this. È un Dio in natura che si produce davanti ai tuoi occhi. Esatto, il Dio è nella natura. Oh, è come dice Spinoza. Yes, because clearly it is a God in nature that is produced before your eyes. Exactly. God is in nature. As Spinoza says, but not the sacramental, profound entity, the one of punishment and dual inscriptions. And here, certain problems with the new method begin. There is a lot of creativity in entire stochastic chains, which produce complex events like the biological evolution of the species, subjects that decrease and others that reproduce. But not everything was that simple. A certain mechanism dominated during the 19th century. We are now able to be surprised because we do not understand. We have profound psychological uncertainties regarding the mysteries of life. And sometimes these phenomena produce perceptive dazzling, religious mystic. It is a playful component, if you wish, because the play is in the form which puts labels on things, closing this hiatus that has formed between the thing and the world that defines it. It encloses the relationship with formidable linguistic games, able to give a name to the object, which would be, without definition, inexistent, able to communicatively take it into the space, without burdening the ponderability of the thing it becomes. Senza la ponderalità dell'oggetto che viene messo in essere. Faccio solo una parete per chi non ti conosce il tuo lavoro, diremo Duchamp pianamente. I would like to make a brief clarification for anyone who does not know your work. We could say you have a Duchamp type approach, opening to psychoanalysis, which we will discuss later. Now we are having fun in finding the borders between art and science. <laughs> 
Stiamo cercando di We are trying to tell ourselves the art of wonder. What can make the experience of life even more wonderful without become second-rate love stories? Those fashionable soap operas full of sentimentalism. Yes to sentiment, no to sentimentalism. Abbastanza interessanti di, di sentimento, ecco, non, sia il sentimento, non al sentimentalismo, sia questa. Con... Il, il punto nodale eh? mi sembra quello che tu hai evidenziato, cioè il bios, cioè la vita, in fondo, che cos'è? The crucial point seems to be the bios, which you mentioned, which is what Leonardo found wonderful and which we still do. We are all there. We do not understand uh, certain things, uh, and this probably causes uh, conceptualizations, uh, works, uh, and creation is related to life. Che l'osservatore è implicito nel sistema che sta osservando, e quindi non essendo If I wish to support your reasoning, it is because the observer is implicit in the system he is observing and cannot be outside it, because. As the Palo Alto School says, using the theory of types, you cannot be inside and outside the same system. You must decide linguistically what you want. It is disconcerting to be involved in these observations where you have doubts about your position as an observer. This is the great discovery that Schrödinger made in the 50s with the absolute question, what is life? Furthermore, everything that was enunciated in the principle of indetermination by the Copenhagen School with its conjecture is able to measure physical events beginning from the terrible destruction of the revelation system that occurred. I feel that psychoanalysis and the psychological sciences have recently been in this difficult situation, indetermination. 19th century positivity, the Freudian school, if you wish, still established roles. Of casuality. Of casuality determining very precise roles. Ambiguity and an impossible outcome were avoided between patient and analyst. Freud had understood. He was an amazing person with a brilliant mind. But what we have now understood is that, as I jokingly sustain, the professional new listener, the analyst, becomes a hostage when he or she receives a great narration that is the patient's clinical situation. Therefore, one of the two must absent themselves, because in the theory of types, one must be outside the diagram of Venn. To be able to tell it, to be able to tell it in turn as a phenomenon, and to be able to distance oneself perceptively and prospectively, to be able to produce another narration. Otherwise, one is mineralized. An analyst who is captured by the patient, and it often happens, is co opted by the narrator's personality. An exceptional and mysterious fact occurs here. In man's creativity, there are thousands of linguistic and cognitive subterfuges and sleights of hand that enable interaction. Creative subterfuges, it sounds beautiful. Yes, being able to use them without paying the consequences without being constantly obliged uh, to elaborate theories that explain what creativity is, which we know nothing about. I don't know if I should show this work of yours. The first time I came to your house, uh, I must have been nine, and I saw these balls uh, that were there before me as they date back to 1960, and they are very stochastic, that is very clear. This work was exhibited in the Rome Museum, 
Chiaro, Buon sentire. Buon sentire. Che questo è un omaggio di una chiarezza e che credo fosse anche a Roma, no? Noi sì, andremo certo. a Roma probabilmente. Certo, ma che poi se il principe era a Roma, che nasce, che da, nasce da un momento in cui questo oggetto viene fatto per gli Olivetti, eh, per gli Olivetti, i made it for Olivetti. It is the moment when the concept of program was studied. Computer memories were made possible by the orientation of electromagnetic toroidal structures. Siamo da Olivetti. Quindi eravamo alla creazione sì, sì, Olivetti ha un del computer, in quel perché momento, tu eri consulente de... dell'Olivetti. No, 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 so it was the time of the first computers, because you were a consultant for Olivetti. We were not consultants. Olivetti has always been surrounded by intellectuals able to investigate the creative emergencies. And thanks to Giorgio Soavi, who was the public relations manager for Olivetti, and Bruno Munari, who was the graphic designer, they thought that the conceptual and theoretic apparatus of a program could be made. In Ivrea and the calculation centers, where they were conducting the first experiences on calculators, they were experimenting with the sequence chains, the variance in a system that operated arithmetic or geometric progressions, binary formulas, the extent to which the stochastic event intervened with respect to the mathematically determined events. At that time, each one of us responded with different phenomena, but we were substantially united. Però sono sostanzialmente tutti molto uniti. Quella mostra fu eccezionale che andò anche negli Stati Uniti. Parliamo di una mostra che si intitolava Arte Programmata. An exhibition of some exceptional items was organized and was later taken to the United States. L'arte programmata, with the formidable definition by Umberto Eco of open work. E che ha lavoro medico che posso che affermare in questo momento rappresento è sempre aperto perché open work volte... it seems the definition we give to psychoanalysis now and to all the scientific and medical work we can say that it's always open and often we state i have not understood anything of course open in the sense as well of not concluded conclusion reaching a definition is only achieved by the presence of another person who is present with you. And this is absolutely evident in psychiatry and psychoanalysis. Without the other, the communicative counterpart, the work cannot be completed. For us, artistically, without the movement that makes the object rotate, the white and red spheres do not move from one side to the other. At the beginning, all the red balls are on one side, and all the white ones are on the other, separated by a membrane with a hole. The first manipulations produce the same state as the mind, irreversible. And from that moment, the original organization is never reproduced, unless you dismantle the object and start it again from the beginning. A progressive situation of entropy is produced. I have never made the calculations, but mathematicians can, and of how many thousands of stochastic events can occur, how many configurations can be produced between one part and the other with the balls that become perceptively instable. Like Hamlet's clouds, the observer projects associative ideas of instable configurations, which are fascinating because you cannot remember them. There are very elementary geometric forms that can easily be remembered. And there are then complex entities that are very difficult to remember. They are familiar when you are looking at them, and you are able to describe them exactly. But when you can no longer see them, and you ask the interviewer or the person who is doing the test to repeat them, panic. Everything falls apart. The highly complex situations are only entrusted to machines, as they are scarcely emotive. Not completely true, though. 
because Turing studies have opened horizons that allow machines to reproduce. The figurations of many of my works, like the one behind you, for example, establish very special relationships between the persisting background and the emerging and instable figure in the foreground. White, luminous dots become more luminous than others, and black dots blend in with the land. White, luminous dots become more luminous than others and black dots blend in with the land behind the paintings, like good form. Good form tries to predefine itself in a crafty manner, an inexact but effective term. It is an expedient that calls the eye into play, a trompe l'oeil, obliging the eye to go backwards and forwards, producing the reversibility studied by Necker that makes everything perceptively unstable in a fascinating game. So the theory of games is subordinate to the theory of events, both artistic and scientific. I would like to stop you a moment, huh? because that seems very important to me, in that the work determines a subjective truth, because it obliges me to instability, and by negation forces me to give me the continuity. Exactly. So therefore, you put me in front of that, and no, there is no continuity. There is no continuity, and this jump-in, let us say, blood and aesthetic pressure, also produces cerebral hypertension, a movement that stabilizes an optical illusion to calm you, because otherwise you would end up having serious physical accidents. If you do not implement certain vision ambiguities as defense, and the Gestalt speaks widely of this, you would probably be unable to climb the stairs. You would have a fatal fall. You would do any number of absurd things. If you were unable to partially follow these systems with a certainty that is apparently unconcerned with everything you are using, this is the surprise. I am getting old, and it is an enormous surprise. I thought I was much more rational and able to manage the phenomena rationally. But instead, I realized that, not throwing the dice, but letting things take their course, they behave naturally with respect to a form of conservation. The conservation of biological homeostasis. It is the most important thing a human can do to preserve the brain and mind. The mind must be protected, and it protects itself. Neuroscientists know much more than me on this. The mind protects itself because it has the ability not to break up in the complexity of the mind system, but to work by sectors activated or deactivated, with open or closed circuits, connected ganglions. Recently, studies are being conducted into the memory and the qualia on the representation of situations recalled to present memory, connecting only apparently detached synapses, which reform the entire cognitive landscape. <laughs> They produce mnesis, which does not exist as such, but it appears like a configuration. The wonder of the brain is that something that was dissimulated was, but was not, is suddenly represented with the ability to be retold, redesigned, and realistic. Which is what Lacan says of the subject. The subject does not exist. It exists an instant eventuality, and it may appear. The subject itself does not exist. In my dialogue with you, the dialogue I often have with the subjects, I am not very interested in talking to artists, architects, designers, and estates 
because there is no doubt that there are subjects with an ability for synthesis and the ability to produce products that have a certain wonder and are part of the history of the various disciplines as examples. The reason I feel closer to people of letters, let's say, to poets, to the dramaturgy I am interested in as total performance, is the fact of talking to subjects who are holding nothing in their hands and who have to constantly invent. I talk to psychologists and neuropsychologists. I feel their extreme weakness in the material they have available. They do not have objects. There is none of the ponderability that distinguishes other forms of organization. And I can assure you, they could almost be in the situation I mentioned earlier of the general intellect. When the machines are so powerful and have absorbed such a vast amount of collective intelligence, all you have to do is to become the machine controller. The general structure of the web is formed of thousands of users who no longer have to do the physical hard work and are able to use the cybernetic machines. The same machine that is recording us now is able to organize the control of the physical world. That it is us who are speaking and return it without any further work. Everything that has characterized our human experience for millions of years, all the hard work, hunting, fishing and harvesting, from ancient times on. ...di affaticamenti, di caccia, di pesca e di raccolta, capisci? Adesso c'è qualcosa di nuovo che si sta producendo, che sta emancipando l'uomo verso una dimensione completamente diversa che il Marx aveva... Something new is emancipating man towards a different dimension. Marx had understood it exactly, in Grundrisse, and defined it as possessing general intellect, which is collective intelligence a communitas that emerges because we are no longer obliged to produce the added work and the added value and which is able to rapidly spread into general intellect. We could say that Marx's general intellect is very close to the thought that neurophysiologists currently have of the brain, of the mind. And the closeness is quite extraordinary and the chance of a new policy. If there is one thing that is changing completely, it is that there are no longer geographical borders. This globality, this global village, McLuhan style if you wish, a platitude, but true, real, authentic... No, virtual perhaps, real in virtuality. Did you know that there are currents of thought that already exactly establish that real is nothing more than this virtual, which has entered the communications of objects, representing them because, in reality, with electronic systems to control work, there is no more reality. If you consider reality as that of the 19th century physical, the thing, well, there is no longer the thing. There are all the descriptions of the thing that make it a thing in any moment. But at the end, the things exist because a series of conjectures and synapses meet in the web. That seems wonderful to me as if we were circumscribing the metaphors that are used in politics. They are metaphors because deep down of the brain thing, nobody knows anything. And of the political thing, probably nobody knows anything either. The novelty that we must make an effort in understanding is that they are fully things, because a series of positive signs typical of Turing's machine, are placed in a sequence, like zero, one, zero, one, like a string. That is the thing. Well, the metaphor is a device we have created linguistically and rhetorically since the 16th century to give us reason for a very complex form, which included the taxa, lectio, 
elocutio, and so on. Concepts that new neural linguistics no longer uses. We have fully overcome the entire desaussure system. Finché, finché sfogliavo le tue cose, finché pensavo di venire qua, che in fondo è anche ciò che caratterizza quello che tu hai fatto un pochino nella tua vita, nel senso che le tue opere non sono rappresentazioni quanto... I would like to return to a thought I had yesterday when I was looking at your works in the catalog. They are not a metaphor and they are not an aesthetic object, even if they are perceived as such, but they are structures of thought. It seemed that creating the work meant working on the thought, a continuous construction related to the real, almost extroversion of introversion. I don't know how to say it. It is extimacy, as Lacan says. Questo è quasi un'estroflessione di un'introflessione, non so come dire. È un'estimità che diventa... You are saying it very well. It is extimacy that basically becomes an unstable essence, as it is multipliable, because it finds several solutions, and it determines itself, and determines to then return inside. It is like a circuit in pulsation, and for this it is structural work. I would like to make a quip. It is the return of the removed. No, it is not the return of the removed, because we are already in a metaphor. It is a quip in the sense that it is the return of the events in our memory. When the memory returns, it has the amazing ability to replace the entities in certain axes, losing certain details. Because to enable presenting them all, we would have to stop the time machine and go back to that time. This quantum leap means that certain elements in the configuration you recall or revisit have axiomatic holds to return to certain positions to extend and alter them. Let's see if I can explain. In autopoiesis of the human, as Varela and Maturana say, you are in a window that allows you to continue producing, recalling, revoking limits and thresholds. Only inside the window of 37 degrees can all the biological experiences of a biological body be maintained. The alterations produce entropies. Limiti, soglie, solo dentro la finestra di 37 gradi tutte quelle esperienze che caratterizzano la biologia del corpo vivente si mantengono. Se si altero da una parte entri dentro le entropie e se vai dall'altra parte della finestra ci hai un milione di Bernard. Questo. Eh, esatto. cioè, quando si scopre... It is the best interior, like Bernard said, because there is a homeostasis in non-homeothermic beings. We need it. Exceed, go beyond. Unexplained enthalpic catastrophes occur, or likewise, entropic dissipations called thermodynamically. It is this constantly being on the threshold, a retrocession, a feedback, that is probably the right term. That is what we are talking about. Earlier, with a quip, I moved towards Nietzsche and his eternal return. L'eterno ritorno, Nietzscheano, non è... Però è un eterno ritorno che ogni volta si rimaneggia producendo del nuovo. But it is an eternal return that is rearranged each time to produce something new. And it is here, in my opinion, that this thing touches reality, in that it is only through a sequence, say, real anxiety creation, as the only true defense of reality, and as a new construction, because deep down, real is anxiety. But that is where life and energy come from. 
That is where all these wonderful products come from, which are summarized here, but which are millions of things. Because I know you, and I can safely say so, they are millions of things, like the millions of things we have talked about now. So many. We have a recording to help us, like a memory outside of us.